Hello and welcome to the fifth episode of Top Talks, where we welcome new CEO Clubs members. Today, I'm really happy to host uh, Vasile Varvaroi, who is the regional lead for Cargill, for Blue Danube and Ukraine. That's intriguing already, and he will tell us more about it. <laughs> uh, before asking you about what Blue Danube means, and uh, okay, we all know what Ukraine means, but we'll not talk about this in that interview. Uh, let me take you through the, uh, the rules of today's interview. So, welcome, first of all. Good to be here. Good to have you here. And uh, before starting, I wanted to say that we have taken all the necessary measures in order to make sure that uh, health uh, safety is, uh, comes first. And uh, we're here to play a game. Um, there are five categories of questions. And you'll be choosing the category. I will be asking the question. And uh, every question bears some points. Five, ten, fifteen. The more the points, the more challenging the question. So, you know, <laughs> when you hear fifteen points, don't be very happy. <laughs> uh, and uh, what we'll do is, um, after your answer, You get the points and our goal is in the next 30 minutes for you to exceed 100 points, which means that you will be eligible to donate 10 books to our CEO's Back to School program. So the kids are waiting for your success. No pressure. Okay. Who is Vasile? <laughs> well, first of all, let me uh, start by saying that I'm very happy to be here with you today. Um, uh, some of you may know, but I'm uh, one of the Uh, newborns for the club, so I'm, I, I joined a couple of months ago and uh, I'm looking forward to, to, to this experience. Who is Vasile? Um, Vasile is a 47-year-old man. <laughs> Uh, uh, I have one kid, if I have to start with, um, uh, with my personal life. I have a daughter, she's uh, 13, so she keeps me quite, uh, quite busy. It's an interesting, uh, interesting age. Apart from that, uh, I'm, I would say I'm a passionate man about everything that relates to, to life, both in, in work but also in the activities that I like to do, to do outside. I'm here as uh, you, you were reading the, the, my title because it's quite long, uh, but I'm here as, as uh, the regional uh, leading Cargill. Uh, e reading? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Yeah, I work for Cargill since 2003, so most of my professional, uh, professional life. I've always been active in, in the agriculture and the food industry. I love it, actually. I don't think I will... You never know, but I don't think I will, uh, I will change the domain because it's very much, uh, very much alive. Um, apart from that, yeah, I try to keep myself busy every day. Uh, uh, if not at work, then I have a lot of, uh, and I will probably start with that one, um, I have a lot of um, private passions that I like to, uh, to, to follow. What do you do at uh, Cargill? Uh, we, we, I think sometimes we confuse people with the way we name these, uh, these roles. Uh, again, my role is regional lead for two regions in Kargil. So you mentioned Ukraine, uh, that's a big enough country to be a region on its own. Uh, on top of that, I'm also um, uh, managing the region that we call Blue Danube. To be honest, I came up with this name, so uh, I was trying to be poetic or something. Uh, but basically what, uh, what includes, includes uh, four countries, uh, Romania, uh, Bulgaria, Hungary, uh, Italy. And apart from that, we also uh, manage other, uh, some other countries in the regions where we don't have a physical mm -hmm. presence, but we still do trading activities with uh, countries like Serbia, Croatia, Moldova, Greece. Um, The role is commercial, so I'm, I'm in charge of all the commercial uh, activities for my group mm -hmm. uh, in, in the two regions that I, uh, that I manage. Um, okay, I will not complicate the answer more. Uh, the way we are structured internally, I don't think it, uh, it's uh, interesting for, uh, for you. What we do, we basically trade grains. Um, mm -hmm. Cargill is a food company, so we buy and sell grains. Uh, we store, we, uh, we, we have a number of assets across, uh, across the, the, the region that I manage. We have a crush plant in Ukraine. Um, but these are, say, the, the core uh, activities okay. that, uh, that we do. Uh, God knows what future will bring. We are always looking for new opportunities as well. So nice, nice, yeah. good. So thank you for the introduction. Uh, are you ready to start? Yeah. 
Okay, so very excited. Hit me with the first category. Which one? I said, uh, yeah, let's start with the personal one. With a personal one. Okay, let's see. Ah, 15 points. Oh, so Hot stuff. When in life have you felt the most alone? <laughs> Interesting question. Deep to start with. Well, uh, I think, uh, well, without trying to hide, I guess, um, I'm divorced. So uh, the moments uh, right before that, probably, uh, I felt uh, most alone. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's an interesting experience, uh, but uh, you, you can learn a lot about yourself, I may mm-hmm. say. So, yeah. so that was probably the time. Okay. Yeah. So 15 points are yours. Thank you. Good start. Already? <laughs> Next category. <laughs> Uh, let's go one by one then. Funny. Funny. Okay. Funny, funny. Another 15 points. Oh my God. You did it on purpose. No, I didn't. You know, they, they, <laughs> you know, they are mixed uh, randomly. Um, make an imitation of the worst or funniest boss you've ever had so far. Worst or funniest? Um... No, and that's an interesting one. I got, you have to work hard for these 15 points. Yeah, I will, I will actually, <laughs> I have to tell you a little bit the story behind. Um, I, I will try to impersonate my first, uh, my first boss. Um, it's, I'm talking about a lady. Um, I respect her a lot, actually. Uh, I'm very grateful for the impact she had on my career because I learned my trade from her. But she was, um, uh, she was very, very tough and... Um, Okay, I'm not sure I will do the... Impre- the, the, the I will... Uh, uh, anyway, you don't know the person, so I don't think... But uh, for, for me, the memory I had was very uh, funny, and I will maybe explain you uh, after. So, Vasile, you need to, to write a letter. Uh, come to me with the letter done in 15 minutes. Then I go, I work, and I come back and said, no, this is, this is crap, do it again, but redo it from the start. <laughs> throws it on the table. Then I come back two minutes later with the, with the letter and she was like, but how can you do it that quick? Uh, the part was that she didn't, uh, she was, we were back in the 90s uh, uh, when that happened, so she was kind of expected me to write it again. So she was not aware that in Word, uh, actually, you just change a few words and you can print it again. <laughs> so <laughs> so then, <laughs> then she said, okay, well done. And I was, uh, I was through technology, with it. Technology, <laughs> technology at the time, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of memories with her, but uh, probably I'm not good at impersonating people. Nice, yeah. nice. No, no. We'll take, we'll, we'll accept these 15 points. <laughs> okay, yours. thank you. So, we, I, I keep uh, going with the, with the next one, sir. Or you uh, want to choose? Yeah, yeah, career. Why not? Okay. So, let's go for career. And for 10 points, what yeah. would you have done differently in your career path? Hmm. I don't think I would do a lot of uh, a lot of things differently. Not because I always chosen the, the the right things, but I don't think it's worth looking back at what you did or you not uh, because you would never it. know. You, you cannot uh, change, and I think uh, you cannot change the past, obviously. And I don't think it's important apart from learning the uh, the the lessons if there are if there are mistakes. Now to give you a, an answer. Probably, I mean, I feel now a little bit that I'm very specialized on my my region alone. So I was always one way or another, or for most part of my career, I was focused on, on say, Central and Eastern Europe. I had one experience uh, working, say, uh, part of that uh, of that region. We spent like two years in Canada, and I would okay. probably now looking back, I would have appreciated another experience like that, where I'm not necessarily working uh, in an environment that is very comfortable for me uh, for me mm-hmm. as a culture you know? so uh, maybe i will get that uh, that uh, so that same industry that. different uh, region uh, yeah on, on industry i said that i didn't think hard of changing it uh, ever but uh, yeah would that's i will uh, why not yeah why not? Uh, i mean the world is changing and uh, and uh, you never know what the uh, future brings yeah. Yeah. open mind yeah the two key words so another 10 points are here so already we are at 40 which is very good, very fast. Now I can relax. <laughs> not yet, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> so next one, next category. Uh, let's go uh, leadership. Let's go for leadership. Leadership. And for five points, what, uh, what are the three most important factors you consider when hiring somebody? Hmm. 
Uh, and you think that's a that's an easy question? That's an easy question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they have to be three, by the way. No four, no two. Just three. <laughs> Choose the three best. What I like to look at uh, when interviewing people is first of all an open mind. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm I must admit I put pressure on people when interviewing. Uh, so I ask a lot of questions very fast. Because I, I'm not looking for the right answers. There is no right answer in most of the questions. But I'm looking for more, uh, more agility, uh, mm -hmm. I must say. Uh, and also a broad, um, uh, broad perspective. Um, so I would say these are probably the main, uh, the, the main things that I'm, uh, I'm focusing on. So yeah. openness? Openness, agility. Agility? Uh, and all, I mean, like in any job, business knowledge is, uh, is, is important as well. How successful are you? In your selections, yeah, they they call it a lottery sometimes. Uh, because somebody, it is. This, that's why I'm asking. Somebody you know? told me that you have 50 chance of being right. I think you have more chances uh, than than more than 50 percent chance. Uh, but it, you cannot be 100 percent sure ever. Yeah. Uh, but I, I would say, yeah, I never did the math, but uh, probably 80 percent of the choices okay. I've made. That's great. That's amazing. Are, are, are okay. Yeah. Let me ask you a question here. I'll give you another five points mm. because it's an extra one. Yeah. How do you handle raw talent when you come across it? Raw talent? Raw talent, yes. Somebody who you see and is a gem, you know, is an uncut diamond. And you can tell from the first 10 minutes that you have him in front of you in the interview. Mm. What do you do? Given, sorry, given that these people are very hard to find. Uh, yeah, but I, I, I think, uh, actually, I never thought that uh, finding talent per se is, uh, is a big issue. Uh, we are surrounded by talent, I, I may say so. Uh, now, when I'm being faced with a uh, raw gem, like you like we call it. The Maradona of uh, uh, 19 years old, you know. I, I think these people will, will have to be moved faster through their training program, and they will definitely have to be challenged more. Uh, it's not only for testing them, but I, I also think it's, uh, it comes with a, a little bit of uh, the territory when you talk about high performance, high potential uh, individuals that they get uh, bored quite, uh, mm -hmm. quite easily. So what I will do, I will move them uh, a lot, uh, challenge them quite early, uh, don't allow time to breathe uh, because they, they develop better under, I would say, under focused pressure, let me put it mm -hmm. this way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good, good. So another 10 points are yours. Already halfway, 50 points. Next one is... Uh, inspirational. Inspirational, yes. Let's see. For 10 points, what is one mistake you witness leaders making more frequently than others? Hmm. A common mistake. It's, it's another interesting question because I think we all do lots of mistakes. Yeah? Uh, where um, I would say the most frequent, frequent ones or the ones that bother me the most uh, and I'll give you two examples. Um, I think when we talk strategy, uh, especially strategy execution, we tend to focus uh, probably too often on the structure of the team and ignore mm, or not uh, in, um, uh, imply as much efforts on addressing the other uh, parts of the, the issue, talking the culture, the capabilities of the team. I think it's sometimes easier to say, we change the structure of the team and hope for the best. Uh, this, this is, I think, uh, room for, uh, this leaves a lot of room for disasters, actually. Mm -hmm. So uh, have the broader picture uh, would be the first part of my answer. And the second, um, even with the best strategy in the world, I would say that 80% of uh, success comes from execution. So uh, where I see failures more often is not in either deciding the, the strategy or deciding the game plan to, uh, to reach it. It's more in being consistent, and that's another discussion on its own, being consistent uh, with the execution part. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably the most, uh, some people will call it the most boring part of the process because it's always uh, probably more fun to discuss what we want to achieve, what we have to change, how is the market going to develop, and all this good stuff. But uh, for me, it's probably more important to be consistent with the game plan mm -hmm. that, uh, that you set up uh, for you. Great, great. Thank you. Another 10 points are yours. Next one. Uh, go back to the top, personal. Personal. Or five points. How would your friends describe you? <laughs> I don't know, you be have honest, to ask them. Be honest. <laughs> I think I'm a fun person to be with. Uh, I think I have a lot of, uh, a lot of different hobbies. So I'm, I'm probably... Like? Uh, 
Uh, I have lots of them. So uh, I'm surrounded by uh, photo equipment. So I'll start with this one. I'm uh, uh, photography. It's, it's one of yeah. my passions. Yeah. Um, I'm in love with motorcycles. Uh, I do sports as, as, as much as I can. So I, I run, I bike. Motorcycles I, off-road or... Uh Uh, I think I'm getting too old for that, okay. and uh, it's 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 mostly uh, uh, road. Uh, not okay. I, I tried off road as well. I almost broke a rib, so uh, I will stay uh, stay. I, I will I will try to get better before I uh, <laughs> yeah. I uh, have the experience uh, experience again. I, yeah. I'm, I'm in love with diving, scuba diving. I okay. mean, uh, if I could uh, have a decent living out of that, I would probably uh, I would probably follow that career path. Uh, so I, I yeah I read a lot. Uh, so I'm, I think I have a, a lot of patients outside of uh, outside of work. I think also my friends will find me trustful um, uh, because that's a value that I. This is what I expect my friends to be, and I guess they expect me to be to be the same. Uh, yeah, I think that's good. Tell enough. me one thing that they don't like. I don't know uh, how to answer that because I'm perfect. Are you uh, punctual uh, in your meetings? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Well, okay. Maybe. Maybe not so. Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe I'm being rushed sometimes. Maybe I, I don't uh, take enough time to to go through the details of what okay. we want to do together. Maybe I'm changing my mind too often. Who knows? Okay. Yeah. Points But, uh, of improvement. <laughs> yeah, we all have. Uh, we all have. By the them, way, so. there are many members who ride. A bike. I heard. So yeah, so I'm looking forward to to, to meet the motorcycle yeah, club. Yeah. <laughs> great, great. Another five points are yours. Thank you. Next question. I'll try to be funny again. Funny again. Okay. For ten points, now I'm gonna have to ask you a question myself. Mm. What would I want to ask you that is not in the cards? Let me think about it. <laughs> um, you know what? I'm gonna keep this card as a joker. And before we finish that interview, I'm going to come up with a question. Okay? Cool. So I'll keep it Maybe here. Maybe if you'll give it to me. I should ask you a question. <laughs> It's yours. Fair <laughs> <Thank> trade. You. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so you want to do it now or um, later? Uh, as you wish. Yes. I can. Shoot. So um, tell me one thing you love about being here and one thing you hate. Mm. Difficult, difficult because there are uh, many, many more things that I love than one. Mm. Uh, and I don't usually hate in my life, you know. I mean, if I don't like something, I'm trying to change it if possible or, the, or ignore it if I cannot uh, change it. <laughs> so I don't feel hate about something. Let me start with that. And uh, I will try to be as less um, politically correct as possible. Um, one thing I don't like in Romania is that we keep talking about this other Romania that we all want and mm. you know and uh, we dream of and uh, as soon as we leave this meeting to go to the next one we'll park on the pavement <laughs> you know this is inconsistent I mean either you want to change something and and I'm, talk I'm including myself to that by the way So either we want to change something and we, we are the change, we become the change, or then it's just uh, philosophical discussions that mm. we keep having. So that's one thing that uh, bothers me. Um, one thing I love here, okay, let me, I'll, I'll choose something poetic. My favorite time of the year in Bucharest is summer, nights, where, you know, it's quiet outside and I go out with mm. a cigarette and I walk with my music. And the scent of tay. Mm. I think that if I ever leave, this is the scent that I will take with me and will remind me of yeah. uh, <laughs> my time here. Yeah, very interesting. So, yeah, this, this is. And, and some specific walks, <laughs> specific, um, uh, yeah, walks I've taken uh, in some parts of the city, which uh, I, I felt. I felt that very, since the beginning when I came here, I felt very connected with the place for some strange reason. Funny story, my, you know, my last name is Hadzidakis. So I used to play football and my friends, my co-players, they used to call me Hadji for the sake of, unfortunately, not the technique, not the skill, you know. And um, after I came to Romania, 
and I realized that I'm going to stay here for quite a while, I was thinking to myself, was life trying to tell me something all this time? You know, <laughs> <laughs> somehow I'm connected to that place. Uh, yeah, so uh, 99 uh, good things and uh, only one uh, not so good. Uh, but it's not because there are things that are not good here. Uh, like everywhere, there are quite a few. Uh, but I believe that uh, that's why this is one reason why God gave us two eyes, one positive and one negative. And it's a choice with mm. which eye you want to see the world. And it has been my choice for many, many years now to mm. see the world with a positive eye. So, and I think it was a good decision. <laughs> so, so I must give you back 10 points. Uh, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I would have to give them back to you, so don't. I mean, it's okay. <laughs> thank you. Good. Thank you for the question. Um, next question. It's career. Career. Okay. Career, career, career. Here. So, four or five points. What would you like to be your next big professional step? I think I probably answer yeah, uh, part, of, uh, par part, uh, part of the uh, question already. I, uh, and I must say that this is one of the reasons that I work for, for, for Cargill for already what uh, I'm getting close to 19 years now. Uh, I, I, I had the opportunity of doing different things um, and I definitely uh, appreciated that. Uh, as for the next assignment, uh, so again, I would probably prefer to be something outside the regions that I'm comfortable with and probably changing the product line as well. So go into other areas of, uh, of what Cargill is, uh, is doing, more closer to the industrial uh, part. Or I may say so also uh, I'm very interested in the new trends that are affecting our world and our industry as well. We, we started talking more and more about digitalization, which is uh, for, for the food and especially the agri-industry, something relatively new. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sustainability, you know, uh, healthier eat, eating hab habits and, and all that. There, are, there is a lot of things happening in this sphere and I would love to be part of that. Job, outside, job aside, which city in the world would you move tomorrow? Barcelona. Barcelona. Uh, that's very easy, very easy, easy. for me to, to answer, yeah. Uh, I love everything there. Yeah, I, I mean, the most beautiful town for me is Paris. Uh, but say I feel closer to the Spanish uh, culture, I feel at home there. Yeah, so uh, I probably visited Barcelona. I don't know ten times, uh, and I always found something something else interesting to do. Nice. Are you also a football fan? Uh, yeah, like every man, I would say, but not a very passionate one. I may okay. say so. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So another five points. For you, already at 70, we are, uh, we have like uh, a bit more than 10 minutes. Oh, so I need to so rush with okay. the answers. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> we are good, we are good. Please, ne next one. Next one uh, was leadership again. Leadership. Let's see. For 10 points, what are the biggest challenges leaders are facing today, in your opinion? Very good question again. Um, I think uh, what is important, I'm, I may, it may be a longer discussion uh, to talk about uh, what leaders in general are facing. I probably, I can bring my, my, my own examples with uh, what are the focus areas for myself. I think uh, retaining, developing and engaging that teams it's something that is very relevant uh, you know since if I look I have to look back at my career uh, the supply demand factor uh, in um, uh, in the market changed I mean I was chasing a job um, when I started uh, but nowadays I think uh, jobs are chasing you to a certain uh, to a certain extent so maintaining uh, a very stable engaged and well performing team for me probably comes uh, at the top of my uh, my priority list uh, and uh, and this is good and bad yeah it's a challenge but I think it's also a great opportunity because um, uh, by employing the best team I think there is no other way but be successful mm -hmm. Uh, the other challenges that I think everybody faces, not uh, necessarily uh, related to the industry I operate in, is the fact that the world is changing much, much faster than, than 
for sure than 30 years ago, but I can say the same about uh, 10 years ago or five years ago. The world is indeed uh, changing. The pace is faster. Obviously, there, there is the impact of, of technology that everybody speaks about, but I don't think it's uh, it only, uh, I don't think it starts there or uh, ends there. Um, apart from, from, uh, from that, and I think I, I mentioned uh, uh, also some, some things about that. Uh, it may be more specific to my, my industry. It's, it's interesting to see how the consumer habits are, uh, are, are changing as well. People are becoming more demanding. And I think to a certain extent, we can say that about all the customers for whatever industry you are talking about. So uh, for any organization becoming more customer centric, I think it's, uh, it's, it's uh, very relevant, uh, re very relevant today. Do you think that this change in the customer's behavior comes from better education or comes from the trend? Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I don't know uh, how to answer straight to this. This I, I think it's a little bit of everything. Yeah, uh, people uh, to to a certain extent, people are becoming more educated in terms of the choices they have. On the other side, um, it, it's also uh, important to realize that they, it's easier for them to have choices these days. You, know, you don't have to search uh, or to spend a lot of time to find what is available in the market. We are, let's take Amazon as an example. I mean, you have everything uh, uh, one click away. Uh, it's definitely becoming more difficult to fight for, for customer attention than, uh, than, than before. Uh, generally speaking, I think this is a very good thing. Uh, the fact that consumer becomes more educated on one side and uh, uh, it's easier for them to access, uh, to access uh, the, the market, definitely is a good thing. Uh, it, it forces us to be more competitive, which is, uh, which is I think, uh, a good thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell me one thing that nobody else knows. I don't know uh, what everybody. Uh, I think there are a lot of things that are personal to all of us. Yeah, uh, so probably I have some of them, but I I don't know the answer Maybe to that. Maybe you cry in movies or something. I don't know. You know. Ah, <laughs> I don't. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know how to. I, I don't think that it's hard for me to pick one thing that is personal to me uh, okay. to that extent that will surprise people to be honest okay. okay it's what you see is what you get with me okay, yeah. okay. fair enough so 10 points mm. are yours next one uh where were we uh inspirational then. inspirational let's see we are at 80 points mm. so Getting for, close. yeah for five points what advice would you give someone going into a leadership position for the first time uh, first of all, uh, it's interesting what you would define to be a leadership uh, a position because I think nowadays we expect people lower and lower in the organization versus the old days to, to, to behave as leaders. And when, when you look at what it means, it means basically own your own stuff more than before. The model that uh, even I at the beginning of my career uh, was available where we'd expect the manager to tell you what to do is slowly disappearing. Yeah. Uh, from my perspective, uh, this is again a very good, uh, a good change. The advice I would give uh, uh, people is to probably invest more in their emotional intelligence because we, we tend to invest a lot in the technical uh, part, but we and, and this is again a very long discussion because it starts with the way we educate our children and uh, and the rest of uh, uh, the things around education per se. Uh, but I, I think it's important for each of us to develop, to, to have a balanced development. On one side, the technical part, on the other side, try to develop ourselves better as individuals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Thank you. Next one. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, we go back to the personal one. To the personal. Getting there. And for 10 points. Ah, that's a nice one. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> if you could witness a historical moment, what would be that and why? Witness. Uh, yeah, what would that be and why? <laughs> Anytime in the history. Well, there are a lot of historical periods that fascinates me. Uh, history is one of my passions. Uh, 
I, I, I would probably not be able to name uh, uh, a moment per se, but I would love to meet a generation. Yeah, um, And probably this is not uh, the inspirational example that you'd expect me to say, but I'm fascinated about the generation of the First World War. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's for me, uh, uh, the, the, and it's one of the worst period in our history, but the fact that somehow the society managed to mobilize uh, entire nations to a, to a war that was so destructive for me is mind-blowing. It's, uh, it can be a nice story when we talk about people acting heroic and all that, but it's also, a, I think, a very hard lesson for us to learn uh, on how detrimental can, you know, propaganda can be for 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 societies in general. Yeah, yeah. and we're talking so about one of the deadliest. Uh, if not the deadliest, wars, if, I think it was uh, yeah, the deadliest. Yeah. I think. And uh, yeah, for for me that period is fascinating, and obviously we don't want to repeat the mistakes of the past. Mm -hmm. But we are destined to do so. You Hopefully know. not, yeah. Yeah. because yeah. I think with the destruction power we have today, you know, it's probably going to be uh, the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. I hope so. I hope yeah. so. But you know, there is one thing that saves us. Mm. And uh, saves our saves our um, uh, mental stability, and it's the fact that we forget. Mm. Yeah, I believe that's True. the greatest gift that God gave to humankind: the ability to forget. I, I could, I would never, I don't want to imagine myself not being able to forget. Mm. You, know, you go crazy, and because we forget, as we can see in history, we repeat the same mistakes over and over again. Yeah. Uh, on a mathematical sequence, I would say. Yeah. Let's hope that not this time Let, and not with words. <laughs> Let's switch to a more optimistic tone, I guess. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, 95. So, next question will take us there. Pick one. Uh, funny again. Funny. I like you. I like you. Um, mm, what was the f most embarrassing or funniest moment in your career? Most embarrassing or funniest? Maybe in your first steps, maybe, I don't, I don't know. Well, I, I don't know if it's funny per se, but I will tell you, it's a story that I will always keep with me uh, and it influenced me, uh, I would say now. Uh, I will tell you a story about my first day in Cargill, yeah, uh, because I, I started working for another, uh, my, I think I, I spent like uh, eight years working for a different company in the same field, also very, uh, very big. Um, but uh, I was used that, you know, I was a senior trader, so I was in charge of um, uh, uh, getting deals done with the, the customers. I would negotiate with them. I will basically negotiate all the contract terms. Uh, but when the time came for me to sign the contract, I would have to go to my manager at that moment in time and he or she will, will sign it. Yeah, so this was what I was used to. So my first day in Cargill, I found them with a um, lot of... Um, of uh, beans, if I remember well, that they didn't know what to do with it. Uh, so I, I was in that market, I knew the customers, and I went straight for the, for the shot. And uh, I, I agreed on everything in my first day in the office. And then I wrote the contract like we are supposed to do, and then I took it, uh, uh, knocked on my uh, GM door and said, uh, okay, I need you to sign this contract. And uh, he said, but why don't you sign it yourself? And I said, well, it's my first day here. Uh, as far as you know, uh, I can sell to my mother. And he looked at me and he said, uh, yeah, you could, but we would not recommend that you do it. So go, uh, go and <laughs> sign it yourself. Yeah. So I was like, oh, <laughs> but, but, but reality is that this was very engaging. Yeah. As long uh, as your mom can pay, it's okay. <laughs> it, it's okay. Yeah. But for, for me, it was a very engaging thing that I could sign my own contract the first day, uh, first day uh, at work, which is, uh, as you know, as you can see now, it's a memory that stayed, uh, stayed yeah. with me. Yeah. You started on the right and, foot. And, and this is why I think... Uh, uh, my advice to, to, to everybody will be to don't forget to invest into onboarding uh, new people in the organization. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's priceless if yeah. done right. Yeah. yeah. Great. So, congratulations. Uh, we exceeded, I think, 100 points by far. And yeah. that's fantastic. So, uh, you will make some kids really happy. I and hope that's so. That's great. Yeah. Um, one last question I would like to ask you is, what do you expect from your participation in this community mm -hmm. with the club? 
uh, what I um, and what and I was what looking for. What made you decide to join? Yeah, yeah, uh, that's a very uh, very good question. Um, what I was looking for is to get into a group of people. You call it a club. Uh, I like it. <laughs> uh, with people uh, having uh, similar but different experiences with mine. Uh, so leaders at a certain level in in their organization. I think uh, I'll find enough challenge uh, here to become a better professional and a better person uh, ultimately um, and this is not uh, not easy uh, to, 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 to find uh, so this is why I was really appreciative when I found out about about you guys I told uh, you the story it's one of um, our it's basically my girlfriend that uh, recommended <laughs> uh, recommended me to, to reach out to you and I'm grateful for that. And great. I'm great. looking forward to We're also for grateful to her. <laughs> <laughs> great. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you very, you very much. much. Yeah. Thank you all for being here with us in this fifth episode of Top Talks and see you soon. Mm-hmm.